Hi, welcome everyone to the conventional conference call. First up, uh, can everyone hear me? If you can, please type yes into your question box now. Okay, wonderful. Excellent. So we're very happy that you're able to join us today. And on the call today, we have Meeting Max President and CEO Jeff Duncan. We have Technical Support Analyst Reed Allen. We also have Client Success Manager Amy Leitz, Client Success Manager Patrick McCubrey, who joins us facilitating the poll question, which we are going to tell you more about shortly, and myself, Marketing Manager Catherine Comberbatch. For those of you who attended Unconvention 2018, we would have met then. Otherwise, you have been receiving emails from me over the past six months or so. Let's have a quick uh, review. Let's quickly review some housekeep housekeeping items. So, when you signed in, you would have called maybe in by telephone. And if you did so, please enter in your audio pin. Uh, if you haven't done that already, take a few seconds now into your audio pin, which shows similar to what is on the screen now, and enter that in with a pound key. Uh, the image on the screen is just an example, so your key, your number will probably be different. And questions, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them into the questions tab. We will address all the questions at the end of the webinar. We also have a contest today. You have the opportunity to win a free registration for Unconvention 2019, and this is valued at $695. You will notice that uh, we have five poll questions throughout the presentation. And to be eligible to win, you simply need to answer all five questions and uh, throughout the webinar. The winner will be randomly selected after the webinar and will, will be announced in the post-webinar email. So stay tuned for that announcement. Okay, moving on to our agenda for today. Jeff will start with a welcome address and explain why we love hosting this annual webinar. I will share what to expect at the 2019 Unconvention. Reed will share all the new and exciting changes in your system over the past six months. Be the first to know. We also have some exciting news to be shared with you all here today, and Amy is going to tell you a little bit more about that. And then finally, we'll end off with a little bit of Q&A, uh, where you can have a chance to uh, type in those questions, and we'll, get, we'll give you the best answer that we can do. All right, so Jeff, can you please share why we host this annual webinar? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Catherine. Uh, folks, this is Jeff Duncan, President and CEO of Meeting Max. It's a pleasure for me to be with you all this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're geographically located. So the planning team asked me to spend a moment to talk about the why of why we hold this call. I, I guess as I reflected on that question and how to answer, it led me to the greater question and maybe a little more existential of why Meeting Max as a whole exists. You know, this is something that we as an organization have spent a lot of time deciphering. It's the bigger question of what is our core purpose and, and why do we exist? So I'll, I'll share with you our realization as it might add some context for you. It's our belief that human beings have this innate and very primal need to gather in groups. When they do, they have uh, the ability to build community. And when community is created, people have a better uh, understanding of almost where they fit in this world. It provides them almost this, this sense of belonging. So Meeting Max exists. Our core purpose is to help people find their tribes. And I would tra challenge everyone who's on this call, if you're in the business of hosting events or you're in the business of providing support to organizations that host an events, I would challenge you that, uh, that this probably this core purpose has some sort of resonance for you as well. Um, okay, so it brings me to my point, and I'm sure the folks that asked me to ask uh, or to answer you this, this very simple question were not intending on me to go into the contemplation of meeting of life. But my point is this, if meeting Max helps people find their tribes, we better darn well get good at assembling the tribes that we control. So we control the meeting Max employee tribe. That's one tribe that meeting Max controls. Um, we spend a lot of time resources and energy on cultivating a culture and an environment that people want to belong to. Um, the other tribe that we control is the Meeting Max user tribe, and this is the tribe that really all of you guys belong to. This was, after all, the entire purpose of the creation of the Unconvention, uh, which we started about a decade ago. It was about getting our tribe together. 
So here's the challenge that we run into. Although we would love to have you guys come up to Vancouver every month, and I'm sure that there's been requests over the years to come visit us every month, it's just not very realistic. If it's realistic to you, I'm guessing if you run it past your CFO, that's probably not going to, uh, not going to fly very well. So hosting an event annually, the unconvention seemed like about the right cadence. That was about the right rhythm to do it once a year. Because the problem with annual is it's a long time to not connect with the whole tribe. I know all of you guys have um, you know, various departments that you connect with all the time here internally, but getting a, an opportunity to gather everyone all in one place can really help create some level of significance. So it was out of this realization that the conference call was born and knowing that we aim to make almost everything about the unconvention unconventional in terms of the spaces and learning, the events and education. We try to make it all unique and unlike any event that you guys have attended. Side note, if you want to have a difficult audience uh, to throw an event for, try throwing an event for people who are in the events business. So we certainly have our work cut out for us each and every year with the unconvention. But knowing that we want to maintain this unconventional when you guys come to us, we kind of took a tongue-in-cheek approach and, and called this call the very conventional conference call. So we placed this call right smack in the middle. So this is halfway between the last unconvention and the next unconvention. Um, this call really exists simply because we miss our mu uh, Meeting Max user tribe, and we love to share with you, learn from you, connect with you. That's really the purpose of it. So here we are, and let me quickly touch on the objectives that we have for all of you in the next 30 minutes or so. So on this call, we're going to have, again, a chance to reconnect with the Meeting Max tribe, all the folks that are in from all of the, the various places uh, around the globe. We want to keep informed of our latest development and developments. Uh, the team has been very hard at work on uh, creating new functionality inside of the system, and we want an opportunity to display that for you on things that have changed since maybe the last time you had a chance to connect with the Unconvention. We want to involve new clients. We want to give you folks that are on the call an understanding of what Meeting Max is all about. We don't want to take for granted the fact, yes, we have multiple people on this call that have been working with us for over 10 years, but we also know that our tribe, our Meeting Max user tribe, continues to grow, and we've got new users from all over the place having a chance to, uh, to connect with us. We want to give you guys a sense for what we're all about. And lastly, I want to give you an idea of what to expect at the Unconvention. This is really the greatest opportunity to connect with peers and uh, get an opportunity uh, to connect with Meeting Max staff, and we're going to be diving into that. So I have been tasked, my last task before I let you go, uh, that I've been tasked with giving you the first poll question. So I'm going to ask Patrick to power up the poll question. You're going to see on your screen how many conventional conference calls have you participated in before today? And there's a number of responses here that you can select from. So just use your mouse to select uh, the answer that's most appropriate for you. This is my first. I've done one before this one. I've done maybe two or three before this. Or, hey, I've done so many of these, I've lost count. So Patrick, I'll pass this over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. It looks like the majority of people have their votes in. I'll give a couple more seconds to get uh, those last minute votes in. Uh, remember, you need all five poll questions answered to be eligible for our contest. Uh, I'll give you guys three more seconds to get those last minute votes in. Three, two, one. And Jeff, I'm going to go ahead and share those results with you. Excellent. Here's the results. So new to the tribe, certainly. 57% of the callers, this is your first time. You have uh, one before this was uh, 16%, two to three is 13%, and 14% uh, of you say, I've been to so many of these, I've lost count. Welcome all the same. I will give you a hint, and I'm going to get in trouble for doing it, but I'm going to give you a hint for the last poll question, understanding that you do need to answer all five poll questions. It may p uh, pay to keep track of this little moose that pops his head up from time to time on the screen. His name is Max, and you're going to see him behind the question on your screen right now. Inside Scoop, keep count of how many times you see him as you just might be asked on poll question number five. So far, just to let you know, I've seen Max four times. And also, just a reminder, you must answer all the poll questions to be entered in for the Unconvention uh, contest. I'll pass this back over to Catherine. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for giving us a quick overview of why we hold this uh, conventional call. And uh, let's let's actually have a look at unconvention. Uh, for those of you that are new to Meeting Max, and I see there's quite a few of you on our poll today, the unconvention is our annual user conference, and this is hosted in Vancouver, British Columbia each April. 
we don't believe in sitting in one ballroom each day. That's way too boring. We like to keep our conference unconventional, unconventional by moving to various venues throughout the day and, of course, fostering a sense of community and teamwork, as Je Jeff mentioned earlier. It's all about the tribe. And um, the 2019 event will take place April 1st to the 3rd. We are looking forward to our 2019 event, which is actually our 11th annual convention. So uh, we looked at uh, the idea of seasons of change, and this idea was born out of the various industry-related disruptors that we face daily. And one of these is uh, being the commission cuts announced by a few hotel chains this year. We are constantly facing disruptors that affect our industry our jobs, and of course, in turn, our day-to-day -day lives. And uh, this unconvention will take a deeper look at how we recognize, anticipate, and manage these many changes. Um, and of course, in keeping with both unconvention style and, 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 and with the idea of seasons of change, we'll be changing venues for the various education sessions. And as Jeff mentioned earlier, we like to keep it unconventional. Uh, it's certainly not like any of the other conferences you've attended, so we look forward to seeing you in 2019. In fact, here's a few reasons why you should attend next year. Uh, it's a perfect opportunity for you to connect with your peers or reconnect with your peers and, of course, grow your network. Um, we will look at uh, exploring new ways to increase return on investment on your housing. And uh, great, you can earn some CEUs for industry designations. And you can learn how to increase room block pickup and uh, learn about the Minimax software from very experienced users. And we always love enjoying interactive education sessions. And what a beautiful place to be doing that in. And you can explore Vancouver as well. Uh, but don't take our word for it. Uh, these are some beautiful testimonials that we receive from this year's participants. Let's have a look at these. This is the best way to learn the most productive practices in the use of Meeting Max. The network networking that takes place over these three days is unbeatable. It's great to visit with other software users about their best practices. The Unconvention creates a valuable forum for learning. And uh, it's an all-around great event. Boutique, educational, entertaining, networking with peers, fun city to visit, and great to meet the Meeting Max crew in person. So there you have it. And PS, uh, you are welcome to send these reasons to your boss to prove why you should be there in 2019 with us. Okay. Are you an MM expert? So at our 2018 Unconvention, we introduced something extra special, and these were the MM Expert Awards. Throughout the conference, we handed out various awards for things like the most room nights in a single event for those that are in attendance, most active MMX user, the best looking event, and those that best demonstrated meeting Max's core values throughout the year. Now you can help us find 2019's winners for some of these categories. And I will send out a nomination form post-webinar where you can nominate peers or yourself for that fact if there's something that you're really proud of. We want to hear all about it. Here are our last year's categories and winners. You can have a quick look at uh, some of those categories and some of those winners there. And while we're talking about unconvention, let's look at the education session. Finally, um, you can expect this is what we what you can expect to see at Unconvention. So we've given you, in the past, we've given you education sessions on housing trends. Uh, we've looked at sub-block management. Uh, we've looked at tools to better sell housing, and of course, getting the most out of your event setup. And uh, we want to hear a little bit more from you. I will be sending out um, in the post webinar email. You will have a link to a survey where you can submit either a session that you would like to present or just submit an idea for an, an education session that you would particularly like to see um, at the Unconvention 2019. So have a look, for, look out for that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This brings us on to poll number two. What type of education are you most looking forward to most? at the Unconvention 2019. So uh, let's have a look. We've got specific feature showcase, best practices, industry trends, or personal development and self-improvement. I know which one I would choose, but why don't you lock in your votes right now? And um, Pat will give us the go ahead. Awesome. Thanks, Catherine. It looks like uh, people are a little bit slower to start responding to this one. So we'll give it a couple more seconds to, to get uh, some votes in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know, I know which one I would like to, Catherine, so um, 
it, it, it's an easy choice for me. <laughs> All right, we'll give you guys a couple more seconds here. Three, two, one, get your last minute votes in and we'll go ahead and close those. Catherine, I'm gonna go ahead and share these on our screen so you can see okay, the results. Great. Thank you so much, Pat. Okay, I love this. Best practices. All right, fantastic. And I see uh, specific feature showcases just coming in there second. And yeah, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Um, lastly, just on Unconvention, I just wanted to remind you that you still have an opportunity to register to qualify for the early bird race. And this is valid from now until December 31st. These rates would be $695 for the first guest and second guest $550. Uh, then we move into January 1st, and you'll be registering first guest at 795, and your second guest at 650. So um, yeah, keep in, keep looking for those registration buttons and try and get those early bird rates. And um, I'm now going to pass you over to Amy and Reed, who are going to share with us uh, all the new things that are in our system. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Reed. All right. Thanks for the introduction, there, Catherine. Hello, my friends. It is I. Reed Allen, Technical Support Analyst at Minimax. And for the next short while here, I'll be telling you all about some of the major highlights from our past six months of sprint releases since the last unconvention earlier this year. Uh, I won't delay any longer. I want to get right into it here. <clears throat> our very first fancy new toy to talk about today is the duplicate reservation checker. This new feature was actually submitted by everybody uh, in the call here from uh, the unconvention earlier this year. So you can be certain that we're listening to you. Uh, so you can use this feature to check your MCP for any potential duplicate reservations that your attendees have booked. It's especially helpful if you have any certain constraints or limitations on bookings for your popular events. You can find out who has booked more rooms than they should have, and you can take action accordingly. Duplicate reservations can be searched by name, <clears throat> email, phone number, address, company, and you can even search for reservations with the same check-in and check-out dates. Next, we have bulk reservation updating. So the bulk reservation change tool is a new feature that we're very excited to share with you all today. We've built a couple basic functions in the tool for now, but uh, stay tuned to see how things evolve in the coming months. So right now, you can use the bulk change tool to resend status emails to targeted guests and reservation contacts, or you can add a note to the hotel. A good example of using this feature would be a scenario where you want to send a message to all attendees at a certain hotel to communicate something such as a tax change or an update to the room reservation agreement. Whatever the case, you can now send emails up to 100 reservations at a time. Next, we have access control groups. If you've gone through our new TCP lately, you've already heard me talk about ACGs and are likely well versed with how they work. For those who haven't, ACGs give you granular control over your system's users, controlling what elements and data they can or can't see or edit. A good, sorry, a good example of utilizing this feature is when you have a number of housing managers working out of the same MCP. If you wanted to ensure your managers were only seeing events that they were working on, you could add their accounts to a group that is configured to hide all other events in the system. You can do the same thing for subblocks, and you can even hide or set read-only access to entire tabs in the system as well. Access control groups is an undertaking of a feature. You can expect many, many new elements to be released down the road as we make every piece of the MCP modular and permission controlled. Okay, next up we have GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. We've added a lot of new stuff to the system to keep you guys GDPR compliant, so let's get right into that. First up, we have our cookie policy. <clears throat> so this is an improvement to our cookie policy disclosure. The first time that someone visits the MMX site, they will be prompted at the bottom, as you can see here, to accept the cookie policy. The message states, by using MeetingMax, you are consenting to our use of cookies in accordance with this cookie policy, and you should set your browser settings accordingly. If you disable the cookies that we use, your, you will impact your user experience while on Meeting Max. Uh, clicking on the blue writing labeled this cookie policy, as you can see right there in the screenshot, will open up the terms and conditions in a new window. <clears throat> Next up, we have additional footer content. If you have your own terms and conditions you want to provide in the footer of the booking process, you can now add them at the event level and the sub block level. 
The text box to add your TNCs can be found under the communication section in your system. You can either add the TNCs directly in this field, or you can even add a link that will take your guests to the TNCs on another web page. And that's what we have in the example here. You can also use this section to add any other text you would like to display at the bottom of your front end. If you have sponsorships or if you guys are utilizing company or team logos, you could even add copyrights and trademarks here as needed. Next, we have the privacy policy. The reservation process has always included the MMX privacy policy agreement, but now you can add an event and an, uh, a hotel policy as well. You can have your attendees accept the privacy policy for both the event and the hotel so you are better covered for security and privacy reasons. All right, next we have the data retention policy. So another neat feature is the new option to specify how much time after an event's checkout date that all personal data is removed from reservations. Depending on your business needs, you can choose from three lengths of time that your system will retain personal data, which are 38 months, 26 months, which is the default, and 14 months after your event's checkout end date. And since this setting is configured at the site level, the duration that you choose here will apply to all events in your system. Here's an example of a reservation that's had its personal data deleted from the system. As you can tell here from the screenshot, after the specified amount of time passes, there will be nothing left to indicate what the data was that existed here before the reservation was cleansed. All right, now we have our third poll question. Which new feature adds the most value for you? So you can choose from the following four, and I have a pretty good idea what you guys are going to be choosing here. We have the duplicate reservation checker, the bulk reservation updating tool, access control groups, and of course, GDPR. Take it away, uh, Pat. Awesome. Thanks, Reed. So it looks like people are getting their votes in. Thank you, guys. Remember, you need to get all five poll questions answered in order to be eligible for our awesome prize. Uh, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to get your votes in. I'll go ahead and close the poll in three, two, one. I was quite generous with my seconds there, so you're welcome to anyone who got that last minute uh, vote in. And Reed, I'm going to go ahead and share those results so you can all check those out. Okay, bulk reservation updating. <clears throat> you know, I actually thought that it was going to be GDPR, um, but that's cool. I guess we're all on the same page and uh, looking forward to the more riveting features in the Max system. That's awesome. All right, let's move on. So now we have updates to our existing features in the Meeting Max system. This is going to be stuff that you guys are already familiar with that's going to be seeing either a facelift or just some general improvements to the way that they all work in the system. <clears throat> so first we have reports, and I'm pretty excited about this one myself, actually. We've changed the way that your favorite reports are built so that they will generate much, much faster. Most of the reports in the Meeting Max system are now seeing between a 500 to 1,000% increase in speed. Wrap your head around that one. We've also added the functionality to remove specific columns from your reports. With privacy and personal information security becoming more of a concern, you can now hide personal contact and payment information from many of the reports. <clears throat> and all right, next we have the confirmation upload tool. So we've made some huge improvements on our confirmation number import tool. It's more interactive, allowing for customized import spreadsheets. The new update will enable users to choose which columns on their own spreadsheets contain the res room ID and confirmation numbers, which means if anybody had the desire to, any Meeting Max user can now select any spreadsheet they want when uploading confirmation numbers into the system. You can also access the import tool right from the MCP. So that means there's no more logging into the HCP just to upload confirmation numbers. The tool is also pretty smart. It will automatically attempt to find the correct columns in the imported spreadsheet without you having to go and select the required columns every single time. And finally, one last change we've made here is actually a pretty big one. You can now upload partial confirmation number lists into the MediaMax system. So if you pull a rooming list and you find you're waiting far too long for every single room to receive a confirmation number, you can now upload just the numbers that you do have, and the system will allow you to come back at a later time and upload the remaining confirmation numbers as you wish. All right, next up we have the vertical banner. So we've added functionality here for you guys to upload multiple vertical banners on your front end. There's no longer a limit to how many can appear here, so you can, get, you can feel free to upload as many banners as you'd like. 
They're fully customizable with the ability to reorder the banners as you like, and you can still add URLs to each of them for your attendees to click on. This will enable you to display a lot more on your booking page, such as sponsorships and destination attractions for your attendees to be aware of. Now we have subblock branding. We've made changes so that subblocks can now be branded individually to have a customized look and feel separate from the rest of the event. VIPs, teams and sporting tournaments, staff and crew for conventions, you name it. You are now fully empowered to tailor each and every single subblock's front end page exactly as you would like for the group. And uh, in this example here, we have a, a page that's been custom tailored for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, they shouldn't feel too special though, they're probably not gonna win. All right, moving on, now we have embedding. So how about jazzing up your reservation process? You can now embed HTML code at the end of your reservation page. Create your own links, buttons, videos, email signup forms, or anything else you can think of. The new feature is especially ideal for video and other promotional content for your events. <clears throat> a good idea for the kind of content you can host here would be something like a recap of last year's event to hype up your attendees, or uh, perhaps a promotional tourism video for your event's destination. And finally, last but not least, we've made updates to the rate display options during the booking process on the hotel selection page. You now have four options to choose from. You have the lowest rate, which is the default. You have the average rate. You can display a range of rates for the hotel, or you can choose to just not show the rates at all. This feature is under the fine tune section when you are building an event. Okay, now we have our fourth poll question. How will you contact MMX for assistance when you need help? Uh, ooh, okay. All right, we've got four options here. You can choose to uh, give me a call. You can email me. You can submit a ticket to the help at mediamax.cc email, or you can uh, go on my Instagram. Yep, that's definitely an option. All right, Pat, take it away. And just so everyone's aware, we, we uh, tricked Reed and made sure that he didn't know that that was one of the options. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to boost his following. Uh, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to get in there. Uh, it looks like the majority of the votes are actually in. So I'll give you guys a couple more seconds. I'll close the poll in three, two, one. And I will go ahead and share those results with you. <laughs> OK, uh, yeah, this is this is good. This is definitely what I wanted to see. Um, yeah, so email me. That's a good idea. Uh, I, I will take the opportunity to mention that the best way to go is to email the help at mediamax.cc email if you want your ticket to be created and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, if you if you wanted to follow me on Instagram, that's that's also totally cool. I'll follow you back. No pressure. All right. Now I'm going to hand it over to Amy and she's going to talk about sneak peeks. Take it away. Thank you so much, Reed. Um, for those who I haven't met yet, my name is Amy Lee, and I'm the newest member of the Meeting Max tribe. I'm going to give you a sneak peek at some of the exciting design changes that are in the works. Please note, they're just sneak peeks. We don't have a release date yet, and things might change a bit. First off, the login page will get a facelift for a more modern and cleaner look. This is just a design change. Your username and password will remain the same. Now for a really big change. We have refreshed the navigation system. What used to be on the top of the screen will now appear vertically along the left side of the screen. This gives you a lot more space on your screen and will reduce the amount of scrolling we have to do. And, even, um, and if you want even more space, you can minimize the navigation panel. But wait, there's even more. Now that we have the extra space along the side, we can expand the event and the hotel lists right from the navigation and jump directly to the page that you need. This will be a great time-saving shortcut. The new expanded boxes also offer a quick search functionality to find what you are looking for in a shorter amount of time. This is the start of a lot of exciting changes. One of our next major initiatives will be the ability to lock to, an, to a specific event. This will be an optional feature that will enable you to choose an event and then any other page you view will be pre-filtered by that specific event. Event locking will save you time so that you don't have to choose which event you'd like to view on every page. I hope you're all as excited as we are for these design changes. Keep an eye out for more information about a release date. The last thing that I'd like to share today, we've been working really hard to update our help documentation, and we have a new repository we're calling the Knowledge Base. 
We currently have almost 100 articles and will be consistently creating more. All of the features and update that Reid spoke about today will have an article so that you can learn more. Note, you must be logged in in order to access the site. It's not open to the public. You can access the knowledge base by clicking at the top right-hand corner of your MediaMax site and choosing MMX Help. Also, this is replacing the older outdated wiki. As always, we would love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much, and back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Reid. Uh, being in marketing, I absolutely love the vertical banners and the, and the opportunity to put uh, more marketing uh, visuals and links in, in that vertical banner. And I am really excited about this left-hand navigation. That you, new user interface looks absolutely beautiful. Well done, team. I can't wait for it to be released. Okay, guys. Um, it looks like we have some time for some questions, uh, but before you leave us, uh, there is a, still poll number five, which is going to take place after the questions. And uh, remember, you need to be uh, eligible to win the prize. You need to answer all five questions, so stay with us. Let's have a look at the questions. Okay, so we have uh, Stephanie, thank you. Has the webinar been recorded? Would love to share with your supervisor. Uh, yes, absolutely. This is being recorded currently. And uh, I will be sending out a post-webinar email uh, where I'm actually going to attach a PDF, which you can send like that, or you can uh, watch the video recording. So watch out for your emails a little bit later on today or to early tomorrow morning. Um, oh, we have somebody coming in here. What's Eve's Reed's Instagram? Okay, uh, Reed, um, you, can read, you can deal with that afterwards. And uh, okay, let's have some more questions coming through. Uh, oh, I see we have one here for Reed. Is there a place where I can find more information about the features uh, discussed today? Reed, you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as uh, Amy mentioned here, we have our knowledge base that's gone live. Uh, so if you're familiar with how to get to the wiki before in the top right of the system, you can just go there to the new knowledge base and then you'll be uh, fully empowered to get all of your uh, answers for your questions there. Um, the other thing that I also wanted to mention too is the training certification program is very much still alive and thriving. Um, all of the new features that you guys saw in the, uh, the slides today are getting their own material there as well. So if it's the first time you guys are seeing the features and you want proper uh, intuitive training on how to use the features, then the TCP is definitely the right way to go as well. So you can get interactive hands-on experience with those features. Um, and then, of course, barring that, if you have any other further questions, I'm always available to answer anything you guys ever possibly have. Uh, thank you, thank you, Reed. And, um, and some of you may also have noticed that in the last couple of release notes, we have added a little section about uh, the TCP. And uh, as, as things are updated, we have, um, we have links in those release notes, so keep an eye, eye out for that. Okay, we have a question here that says, are the instructions for the new recent updates added to the certification page and instructions? Uh, Reed, would you like to take that one? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question, uh, we, uh, we've we been uh, adding all of the updates to the TCP concurrently with the sprint releases. So as updates come out to the system, such as the bolt change tool or the uh, the duplicate reservation checker, whatever you guys are looking at, at the same time, there will be training going live at the same time in the TCP. So as soon as you see those release notes and you see the system for the first time, you'll be able to go into the TCP and then get all of your uh, your training as well. Thank you, Reed and Eric. Uh, we will make sure we have something on the menu for Poutine for Unconvention 2019. Um, right, we have a question here. Do you offer training for hotel users? Uh, Amy, would you like to take this? Yes, I will. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so we do um, we do offer hotel training. Usually there is a session the first Thursday of every month. Reed will do a session for everyone. So you can um, get information on your um, in your system under resources. It will give you a list of all the hotel training that we do. You can sign up there and um, and your hotel users as well. If you need any more information, I can certainly reach out uh, offline. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amy. See, we've got you all covered. Um, okay, so we have another one here. In, ref in reference to event design, um, are to play with headers and footers, so specifically allowing logos to be transparent. Um, Devon, uh, Reid, would, like would you like to take that one on? 
Sure, with regards to uh, transparent logos, um, you can use transparent backgrounds in the system. If you use a PNG, then the background will just be white. The one thing that I would also want to say at the same time is that if you do use a, uh, a transparent logo for your system, uh, you need to be aware that in the emails, the background will be white. And uh, something that we've seen in the past is that because the email itself is also white, the logo might show up a little differently than what you were expecting. So. Um, I mean, I'm no graphic designer, but I guess my advice would be if you want to go for a, uh, a transparent background to put a black outline around the actual logo so that it looks great on the front end, but also in your emails as well. Um, so yeah, in short, PNGs are always supported. Uh, just be aware that the white background might look a little weird in the emails. Okay, thanks, Reed. Uh, why are you not a graphic designer as well? I thought you were, uh, thought you get it everything. Okay, um, we have another one here saying, is there a limit to the length of video you can embed? Also, what file dimensions are the vertical banner? Uh, Reed, would you mind taking that one again, please? Yeah, absolutely. So for the, uh, the uh, embedding of the videos there, there's no set limit because you're actually just simply adding a link to uh, to another site such as a YouTube video or Vimeo or whatever the case is so don't worry about that too much the main thing is uh, knowing the HTML to actually make all of that work and uh, with regards to the vertical banner I'm just double checking right now because I am not as amazing as I thought I was here we are it is uh, 267 pixels wide by 300 high, and you can use uh, any format that you would like. PNG works, JPEGs works, um, everything like that. You can even use uh, .gif files if you wanted to as well. Awesome, thank you, Reed, and uh, you are amazing. So, uh, <laughs> Thanks, guys, uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on to poll number five. And um, but if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to any one of us, and we will certainly get back to you. Uh, as soon as possible. So let's take a look at poll number five. Remember, you have to answer this one too to be eligible to win. Okay, so how many times does Max appear throughout the webinar? And uh, it, that includes this page as well. So uh, we have three times, eight times, 11 times, 15 times, and <laughs> okay, who's Max? Well, um, I hope by now you all know who Max is. Please lock in your votes. Pat, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Catherine. So the votes are coming in. I'll give you guys a little bit extra time with this one to make sure that you get uh, all of your votes in to potentially win that unconvention registration. Uh, looks like the majority of votes are in, so I'm going to give you guys uh, three more seconds. I'll close the poll in three, two, one. And we'll go ahead and share those results. <laughs> okay, so fantastic. Uh, yeah, the majority of you definitely got the answer right. And um, I love that some of you say, who's Max? So <laughs> I'm going to find out who you are and we're going to have a little chat about Max. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you very much to all of you for joining us here today. And uh, please keep a lookout in your emails, in your inboxes, because I will be sending out that post-webinar email with a link to the PDF as well as a video recording of this webinar so you can refer back to it at any point. And uh, good luck and, and have a great day further. We'll, oh, so yes, we'll also be announcing uh, the winner in that email. So good luck to all of you and uh, have a great day further. Thanks, guys.